how to make hollow impact resistant castings using the Duo Matrix Neo polymer modified gypsum system. Now in today's video, we're gonna show you how to make lightweight castings that are hollow, yet very strong and impact resistant using the Duo Matrix Neo polymer modified gypsum system. Now today's video does have several goals that we're trying to achieve. We wanna show you a product that's a lower cost alternative to resins that can be used for hollow and lightweight castings that are strong and impact resistant. Also, we're gonna show you uh, how to use the accelerators so that you can more benefit and faster turn around out of the material when in production. Now let's just jump into this project and see how it's done. The Duo Matrix Neo is a polymer modified gypsum system that has much better physical and performance properties compared to regular gypsum products. The Neo is easy to use and can be cast solid, slush casted or rotationally casted, laid up by hand with chopped glass or fiber mat, or even sprayed. The Neo certifies to the highest flame rating and is water resistant. The matrix thickener will thicken the material while the accelerator will speed up the cure, making this a versatile product that can be used for many different applications, including architectural elements as well as decorative castings. While the Neo is not a direct offset to urethanes and epoxies, it can definitely fulfill many of the functions that the urethanes and epoxies do. It has a mix ratio of 2A to 1B by weight or volume. The working time or pot life is 30 minutes and a cure time is 90 minutes. However, we will be adding an accelerator and for that, you're gonna look into the technical bulletin. There is a section on adding accelerator. And in order to achieve a seven minute work time or pot life, I'm going to be adding 5% of the accelerator by weight to the part B of the Dual Matrix Neo. The reason why I mixed the material to give me a seven minute work time is due to my own personal preference. Between the mixing and the application by rotational casting, it gives me a perfect work time where the material is not too fast and not too slow, but just right for my own working conditions. To mix the matrix accelerator solution, I'm going to mix 40 grams of the matrix Neo accelerator to 480 grams of clean room temperature water. In order to achieve the desired working times, it is really important that we mix accurately and use a gram scale when adding any kind of additive to the Dual Matrix Neo. The matrix accelerator is mixed in the water until it fully dissolves. The accelerator solution can now be immediately used with the Duo Matrix Neo or stored away for future usage. If you choose to store it away, make sure to premix the solution before using it again. Before dispensing any of the material, I'm going to follow the instructions and premix the part B of the Duo Matrix Neo thoroughly. The part A is dispensed by weight, two part A's to one part B. Again, because we are using an accelerator, we want to be using a gram scale in order to be very specific and be able to control the work and cure time of the material. For my initial batch here, I dispensed 200 grams of the part A, 100 grams of the part B, and five grams of the accelerator in order to achieve a seven minute work time. A variable speed drill mixer set on high with a mechanical paddle mixer is used to combine the part A and part B by sifting the part A into the liquid component while mixing. Just like baking, whenever you have liquid and dry components, you always want to sift the powder components into the liquid while mixing. 
This will minimize the possibility of the dry powder lumping and will result in a much better consistency of the mixed product. Now it's good practice to tilt the cup to the side so you can concentrate the material in one part of the mixing container and then continue to mix using your drill and submerge the paddle mixer or mechanical mixer as much as you can in the material. Again, this will give us a much better mixed consistency of the two components. After 60 seconds, we can go ahead and add the accelerator and continue mixing while you do so. I'm going to mix the two components now together for another 30 seconds. The Duo Matrix Neo, once mixed, should be lump free and creamy in consistency. The brush on silicone mold that we're using for this presentation is Mold Start 20T. It's a fast setting silicone that I used as a brush on material. The support shell is made out of freeform air. The material is now poured into the mold opening and rotocasted or slush casted to cover the entire inside of the mold. Now remember, when doing rotational castings, hollow castings, or slush castings, you want to have just enough material to coat the inside, but not too much that it constantly slumps and creates a thickened area inside the casting when it's finished. So now I'm going to just continue spinning the mold in a 360 degree uh, fashion. You want to spin it in every direction until the material sets up. The material is now allowed a partial cure for 15 minutes while we dispense and mix the next layer. The second layer can now be dispensed and mixed just like we did for the first layer. Make sure to follow the mixing instructions for mixing the liquid and dry components for 60 seconds and also tilt your mixing container and submerge the mixer completely in the material and then continue mixing while you add the accelerator for another 30 seconds. The material is then poured into the mold and the rotational casting process can be repeated. Now on the second layer I had a little bit more material and I'm able to uh, much better control how much product is applied to the edges and then uh, some of it of course is spilled over the edge. This helps us to control the thickness and uniformity of the casting right around the edge. This is where it would be the weakest. So by spilling some of that material and bringing it right over the edge, we make sure that the thickness of our casting is same all the way throughout. The material is now allowed a partial cure for 15 minutes. The next layer that we're mixing will be the reinforcement layer. What that means is that we're mixing a reinforcement material, and in this case it's the uh, matrix chopped glass fibers into the Duo Matrix Neo to create a reinforcement uh, layer in the entire uh, casting that we're doing. The fibers are three quarters of an inch in length or 19 millimeters. The chopped fibers can be used anywhere from 3 to 12 percent of the total weight that we're mixing in material. For best results, we recommend using 6 percent of the chopped fibers in a batch. Make sure that you don't overmix the Duo Matrix Neo once the glass fibers are added. The overmixing can actually damage the fibers which will then lose their effectiveness. Now keep in mind that the overall thickness of your final casting should be about 3 eighths of an inch thick to have a good impact resistance. By adding the chopped glass fibers to the Duo Matrix Neo, we're going to greatly improve the overall strength of the finished casting once it's cured. The glass fibers will be penetrated by the casting medium and as the medium itself hardens it will also harden those fibers making the overall casting much stiffer and harder.
The dual matrix Neo is now dispensed. Two parts of the A to one part of the B by weight. And then I'm going to go ahead and dispense the accelerator and the required quantity. Again, I'm using 5% of the accelerator to the part B of my mixture. And then we're going to weigh out some matrix chopped glass fibers. We're going to be adding this at 6% to the total weight of the mix ratio. The 6% is by recommendation of the technical bulletin. And I can go ahead now and mix the components together by slowly sifting the powder into the liquid and mixing it with the variable speed drill on high. And remember to mix for at least 60 seconds. I mix thoroughly by submerging the entire mechanical mixer. And then we're going to add the accelerator and then the chopped glass fibers. Continue mixing for another 30 seconds. Keep in mind that overmixing can damage the glass fibers. So another 30 seconds should be more than sufficient. Once the glass fibers are mixed in, we can now pour the material inside our mold. Now this layer here is a bit thicker just by adding those fibers. The overall consistency is quite thickened. Now remember that the uh, overall thickness that we're trying to achieve is 3 8 of an inch. So whether you do two thinner layers or one thicker layer, the end result should be the same. Uh, even thickness all throughout the casting of 3 8 of an inch. Now I mixed up just enough material to coat the inside of the mold here. And the reason I'm shaking the mold a little bit around is because the mass is quite thick and requires a little bit of movement to get it to move to the edge of our mold. Now I have just enough material to coat the inside so there's no waste really on this layer at all from dumping any access out into the mixing cup. I leave the mold upside down so the layer that we just applied partially cures but slumps towards the bottom of the mold where the casting itself would be the thinnest. Now I'm trying to control that by bringing some of that material and allowing it to slump into that area to create a stronger overall structure in the opening area. The material is now allowed a partial cure for 15 minutes. The last and final layer is now mixed and applied just like we did on the previous layers. And remember what your work time and the cure time of the material is so that you don't end up wasting material that sets up in the mixing container. This last final layer will help encapsulate any of the fibers that are still sticking out on the inside of our casting and further reinforce the overall structure of the final cast. You should have a general sense of the thickness of the casting by now based on the material that you have been spilling over the edge to control the thickness of that edge. Remember we're aiming for 3 8 of an inch thickness overall and if you need to do additional layers to achieve the recommended thickness then you can do so by adding another either thickened layer of the Duo Matrix Neo or you can do additional layers of the Duo Matrix Neo reinforced with the glass fibers. The material is now allowed a full cure of 35 minutes. After a full cure we can now go ahead and demold our Duo Matrix Neo casting by simply peeling away this one part brush on mold that we have to reveal the final casting of our sculpture. Now there's some of the dual matrix neo that's in thin section around the opening of the mold. You can break some of that easily. Uh, once you get to the thicker section, I like to use a belt sander. Of course, you want to make sure to wear a respirator or a dust mask whenever sanding these type of products. And we're going to finish this casting by sanding the bottom edge to a nice flat finish. 
Now here you can see that the casting thickness is overall pretty much even and same all throughout and is about 3 8 of an inch thick overall. Now a strength test with a rubber mallet at the end of this project will give me a better idea of how strong this casting is and what kind of real life expectation I can have of impact on these castings before they get destroyed. Now to finish my castings here I'm going to use some acrylic paint and water and uh, water them down and do a couple of washes in order to get a nice depth to the final finished casting. Because no release agents were used in the mold, I can simply start painting the casting once it's finished. Now, make sure to read the technical bulletin for the Duomatrix Neo to find out more information about release agent recommendations. Now, a lot of different application possibilities with paints are possible. Um, but at the end, uh, if you want to display these pieces outdoors, you want to make sure that you seal them with the appropriate sealer to prevent any kind of uh, deterioration from the elements. And here are some of the results from that project with a couple of different castings with the same procedure, same reinforcement with the glass fibers uh, with uh, different uh, paint finishes at the end. Um, and then sealed to protect it from the elements because these are going to go outdoors. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you'd like to give your own projects a go and need some material, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. So, and there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create hollow impact resistant castings that are lightweight using the Duomatrix Neo polymer modified gypsum system. Now, let's just quickly go over our project goals. We're able to show you a product that's low cost versus a resin, also a material that is able to be cast hollow, yet impact resistant and keeping it lightweight. We use the accelerator to turn around the project much quicker. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button to keep up with our latest mold making casting and other videos, remember to subscribe.